Before even getting involved in the Companies Act, it is necessary to look at the different types of bent business entities that can be used in South Africa today. So let's start off. One can simply start trading in your own name. That's an individual taxpayer trading as a sole proprietor. That concept can be extended to trading in partnership with somebody else. Then there are business trusts and then there are companies. Now let's have a look at those different entities and see how they work. When we look at trading as an individual or sole proprietor, where do we stand with that one? And the advantages are, it's simple. There are no formalities. You can simply take out your wheelbarrow and start trading. You have full control of what you are doing. It's all in your own name. You don't have to manage another juristic personality. And there is no separation of finances, separate books and records, and all of that. And there can be some tax advantages in what you are doing. The disadvantages, however, are that if you go broke, you will go broke with your business and there will be no protection of your estate against claims from somebody else. So there is no limitation of liability when you trade in your own name. And there is no continuity in your business should you become ill or die. There is also limited access to capital as your trading partners prefer to trade with companies as that is the general norm. There are certain tax advantages and they are in the lower brackets. What we see is that up to 235,000 rands a year, the tax rates applied to individual taxpayers after deduction of rebates are such that it's advantageous to trade in your own name when you're a small player. However, as you move up the scales, the tax rates get to 30%, and that's where we can hopefully do a lot better for you. And certainly by the time you get to income of 580,000 rand a year, the total tax rate is then 40%, and that is a definite disadvantage. There are implications where one can register a small business in terms of the sixth schedule to the Income Tax Act if your turnover is less than 1 million rand per annum. These are specialist circumstances. We'll do a little module on those later. Then we look at trading in partnership. That is an extension of the individual coupling up with other individuals. The advantages are it's quite a simple process. You can have a partnership agreement or you can choose not to have a partnership agreement and simply work it on a 50-50 basis. You share your profits and losses, simply split them up as the cowboys did. There is greater access to funds as generally we can get loan finance for partnerships and that partners are taxed in their individual capacities, thus giving them the same tax benefits at the lower rungs as if they were individual taxpayers. The disadvantages of partnerships are that you become responsible for the acts of your partners. So if one partner drives a partnership bust, then everybody goes bust with them. You become liable in your personal capacity jointly and severally with your partners for the debts of the partnership. And there is no continuity to a partnership when one partner leaves or dies or retires. The partnership comes to an end and we start again. There may not be tax efficiency, particularly if income exceeds 300,000 rands per annum. Next up, what about using a trading trust? Now, there are some people like, that like these arrangements, but what are we looking at? Trusts have a very high rate of tax. That's 40% applied to all income. You can see that it is the highest rate of all the taxpayers. That's unless you can cause the income to be attributed to individual taxpayers who are beneficiaries of the trust, but that's a matter for a different debate. Also, capital tax rates for trusts are very high. When we look at trusts, the advantages are that a trust deed can be quite simple. There are estate planning advantages as the trust will continue after you die, therefore it will not be included in your estate. 
We can protect assets from creditors using trusts, but still remain in control at least to some extent. And there may be tax efficiencies if we can cause income to flow through the trust, but that's getting complicated. The disadvantages of trusts are that we have to get into the registration of trust deeds with the Master of the High Court. Trustees can become liable for the acts and debts of a trust. And there is a fiduciary responsibility of trustees to look after the beneficiaries who may not necessarily be the same persons that created the trust. Also watch out for the flat rate of tax attributable to trusts. Thus far, we have looked at the individual taxpayer and the partnership. That's an extension of the individual taxpayer. We have looked at the concept of creating a trust. And we have now get on to what happens when you form a company. Now, when we form a company, we create a separate juristic personality. And that immediately creates some advantages. You have created a separate legal entity. That gives limited liability if you follow the rules. So the big advantage is that if your business runs into trouble, your business may go insolvent, but you will be protected. There is generally a greater access to capital as the general public prefers to deal with companies. And there is increased continuity when you die or retire that doesn't affect the company. It simply carries on trading. Then the big advantage comes that there are flat and favorable tax rates. The disadvantages of companies are that we get into a lot of red tape. And this is what these modules will be all about. The registration formalities that you're going to have to go through. Compliance with the Companies Act. Looking after all the regulations and monitoring of your business. And the onerous responsibilities that are placed on the directors of companies. When it comes to the tax rates, however, the prize is enormous. The top rate of tax for a company on its revenue gains is 28% unless you declare a dividend. When you declare a dividend, SDC, or soon to be known as dividend tax, is imposed on top of that, giving a total maximum tax rate of 35.2%, which is a lot lower than trust and individual tax rates at the top end of individual's tax. The disadvantage, however, is that companies have the highest capital gains tax rates, but hopefully that is more than compensated for with the break that you will get on your revenue gains. There are also better tax rates offered for small businesses. There will be a separate module on that. There are different types of companies. There are public companies and private companies. All of that will have to be explained. But they are all created and regulated by the Companies Act 2008. That's a new piece of legislation that we're now going to have to bust up to show you how to run a company.